This is bait. Life outside the Federal Witness Protection Program. Susan, they usually put people in body bags for letters like this. That came from my friend Jerry, who's retired from the government and is a nurse at Spring Valley Hospital in the ICU. I worked with him for years. But I gotta tell you, one thing I learned the hard way is that Jerry was very, 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 very right. Today marks the four year anniversary of ICE attorney Elliot Williams' landmark letter for a crime victim. Hey, it's Susan. Welcome to tonight's episode of Keep the Bad Guys Away. Hey, nice to see ya. Okay, today on this four year anniversary, you know, I, I think back and reflect everything that has happened in this four year time frame um, since this all broke. Well, first of all, once I got this letter, because like I said, ICE mailed this to me, I was so convinced that the US Department of Justice or my country was gonna do anything for me. I flew to San Juan, Puerto Rico and took a two week cruise, um, you know, cruise vacation and, you know, thought maybe when I came back, you know, maybe the DOJ would have time to get the mail and all that, maybe they'll do something for me. Well, they never did anything for me. Um, you know, and then I tried some of my own options, you know, to push the government, I actually, had the FBI served under the Federal Torts Claims Act a lawsuit claim to the tune of $911 million for all the damn trouble that they've caused me and other parties. Apparently, an agent named Jay Kramer up there in the Office of Congressional Affairs wrote some damn apology letter to Senator Harry Reid to the effect of we'll never do it again. I have yet to see a copy of that. I have been kidnapped a few times, Nevada and in Texas. I've almost wound up in the Arctic Ocean. I've lived homeless on the streets. I've lived on welfare in, in um, Arizona and in Texas. I've had so much property taken. My son's half-sister went missing shortly after Senator Harry Reid's office apparently opened up an FBI investigation. And um, it took me about a year or so to learn that um, my entire family might be missing. And that is because a, a deputy, female deputy, in the U.S. Marshal Service in Phoenix, Arizona, told me to make missing persons reports on my family when I asked her. So what has the U.S. Department of Justice done about this? Nothing. They have not come forth to do anything on their own. Nothing, zip, zero, nothing. So, so if you believe that they have, I'm going to tell you that they're lying. I have been treated like crap. I have faced so much retaliation in the last four years. They're hacking all my nursing employment. Still today, I cannot get a nursing job. And I'm gonna tell you, before the date of this, before the date of this letter, I never had one flipping problem getting a nursing job, a nursing contract anywhere, anywhere. But you know what? I get these little rat tail fucking FBI task force in trouble and that damn stupid U.S. attorney there in Nevada. And then my whole life goes a damn hell. Well, you know what? They committed the damn crimes that caused ICE attorney to write this letter as being within the purview of the DOJ. And all they've done is retaliate against me, my family, and the other victim witnesses. So they have done nothing but what is considered to be like hate crimes or war crimes. Like I said, leaving us out on the street, people getting kidnapped, people probably being murdered. You know, me having to make reports, you know, me, you know, my accounts getting hacked, my bank accounts getting hacked, me having to find my own agents. They keep trying to steer me away from ICE and they're doing it right now because I'm very, very close to the U.S.-Mexico border where there's a heavy ICE presence. They have done absolutely nothing about anything, even Congressman Don Young's office. Up in, uh, up in Alaska, when I was working up in Alaska last year, in Barrow, Alaska, I, I pushed them. I'm like, this is all just a bunch of BS and I want a jurisdiction transfer and I want a jurisdiction transfer and especially Agent Paul Burkholder with Homeland Security Investigations down in Houston, an agent that ICE Customs found for me, somebody that knows what he's doing so you know we can start cleaning up this mess before anything else happens. Well, apparently Congressman Don Young's office called up to the DOJ or some kind of crap like that. Oh, yeah, they're working on my case. Yeah, no, what? Working on taking me out because I almost ended up in the Arctic, which, which made me take a, an emergency air flight into Mexico. So if anybody actually believes that the U.S. Department of Justice has any intent of doing anything about any of this, I tell you that they're a bunch of damn liars. Liars. Because you know what, the U.S. Department of Justice and their greatness with all of their attorneys up there are many, many different departments. They could have this whole thing whipped together a hell of a long time ago. Or they could have it whipped together in a second. No, but you know, that's why I said the intention is to actually make sure that no, no witnesses exist. 
so none of this ever gets presented in a court of law. Nobody ever gets arrested like FBI agents. Maybe the U.S. attorney there in Nevada, whoever handled the case, be it Daniel Bogdan or anybody else, any of those other assistant U.S. attorneys that might have handled this situation, mishandled this situation, might not face criminal charges for not following, I believe it's Title 18 in the United States Code, Fair Treatment of Victim Witnesses. So, you know, the goal is to actually make sure that no witnesses exist. So none of this ever gets turned around. Keep in mind, as far as I know, as, as of today, I don't know anybody that's alive that knows about this case. I'm it. As, as far as the general public, I am the only person that's known to be alive that, that has any kind of knowledge of the mishandlings over the last 10 years. So, anyway... It's definitely an act of criminal intent. It's an act of, of genocide, at least to my family. I'm, I'm assuming that my entire family is dead. And the very fact that, you know, that the government at its highest level in the legal system finds this acceptable is uh, highly concerning. So anyway, that includes the disappearance of children. I mean, can you believe they open up an FBI investigation and another child goes missing and, you know, I, I bet you our mother's dead. I forget when I went over this whole case with Special Agent Phil Roney up in Buffalo, New York. I mean, one thing he asked me, he asked me, and I get this, see, I have to go over a whole case with, with a special agent up in Buffalo, New York because the DOJ is not doing anything. Okay. One thing he asked me about my, we're, we're dealing, we're talking about my cousin's situation up in Rochester, apparently missing. He asked me, he goes, can they identify him? And I'm like, oh yeah, you can identify him. He was at their house. So this would be ringleader number one, the guy that apparently is supposed to be reporting into ICE in Southern California that's got a warrant out in Texas, the so-called terrorists and so forth. But apparently this is the this is the standards for whatever reason that our government follows. They let terrorists out roaming the streets and they make sure that no witnesses exist that could ever bring any kind of evidence forth to any other law enforcement or or in court that um, acts of terrorism have even occurred. So that's what I'm telling you. This, this is massively, massively big. But uh, today, on, and it's disgusting. I'll tell you, it's very, very disgusting because, you know, I read Attorney Elliot Williams' bio, and he worked for the U.S. Department of Justice. He worked in their very, very high-end, sophisticated, organized crime section and stuff. And, and you know, the very fact that um, we saw these criminals out roaming the streets hurting people, and I keep facing retaliation you know, for being a, if we want to call it a whistleblower, is concerning. But like I said, I know there's one thing that I know 100% for sure, and I'm 100% convinced of it. You know, like they say about all witnesses, you know, there's somebody that wants them dead. Well, in my case, it's my own government. So anyway, that's tonight's episode of Keep the Bad Guys Away. I'll see you next time.